Well, thank you. Firstly, um, it's a huge, huge pleasure to be uh, talking to you. Um, my own dad was a big, big, big um, Lonnie Donegan fan, and um, I think he'd be very touched that um, I was uh, interviewing his uh, his son if he were uh, if he were around today. And I mean, growing up in the 1970s, um, the Rolling Stones and Deep Purple and everything were always on a lot in in my house. But there was still always lots of Lonnie Donegan too, so it's a big part of my big part of my childhood. Um, but if we can start off, um, firstly going right back to the uh, to the very beginning, then we'll look at your uh, your more recent um, <coughs> career. But if we if we start back right at the beginning with your uh, with your dad. Um, Elvis Presley recorded That's All Right and your father recorded Rock Island Line in the very same month back in July 1954. It's something that um, Billy Bragg points out in his um, book on uh, on Skiffle and um, he called them the first tremors of an earthquake that would shake the world. Did that give you a good feeling seeing it put like that? Yes, definitely. You know, Billy's been a huge um you know, a campaigner for, you know, the importance of, which has become a kind of forgotten era, the Skiffle era, you know, I mean, and that it was, I mean, Billy did made another um, uh, nice analogy, which was it's the, it was the nursery for British rock and roll, you know, because, you know, songs like Rock On Online, or well, that one in particular, which changed the British music industry, obviously, and um, it, gave a new breath of life you know into what was you know a, a crooner's market and, and and things like that beforehand and i don't mean that in any disrespect to any artist you know um up until when dad came out obviously uh but it's it just it did it changed the nature of it and it made music accessible you know um and it it meant that for people like Eric Clapton for people like Van Morrison for people like you know Jimmy Page all of these kind of people um realized okay so I don't have to be number one you know um a class you know classically trained to play the guitar you know I can learn the basic two three chords or one sometimes you know and, and the lyrics and go for it um and number two um it, it meant that you know, you didn't have to feel self-conscious singing a lot of these, um, you know, old American country blues, um, you know, uh, songs uh, and feel self-conscious about it as a, you know, British and especially as a, as a British white person as well. You didn't feel like you were sort of a false either. You could be paying homage to, you know, and doing it in your own way, which is I mean, that gave birth to like the Beatles and, the you know, the Rolling Stones and, and Led Zeppelin, who all started off in skiffle bands. Yeah, a, yeah. and there was a very British take. It wasn't a straightforward um, adoption no. of an American culture, was it? No, no. I mean, you could argue, really, that while, you know, skiffle was Americana music, as we call it nowadays, but it was definitely with a very British tint to it. It didn't sound the same they were the same songs but they weren't the same way you know they were definitely distinct which is how rock online went to i think number eight in the states you know uh just before uh johnny cash recorded and released it you know and the odd thing is is that my dad had added that part of a toll gate which wasn't in the lead belly original and then johnny cash put out a version afterwards with the toll gate in it again so you can argue that we're thinking that johnny was listening to my dad's version <laughs> Um, because they're, 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 it's kind of like he's just taken dad's version and slowed it down just a little bit, you know. Um, uh, so th there could be something there, there could be something there, but I mean, you could argue really that the skiffle sessions, you know, all that stuff, you know, for that period in time, that sort of six years or whatever it was, um, was a little bit more British, even so, than when the Stones came out because then they were doing it much more per original blues, you know, yeah, 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 you know, uh, but maybe. No, no, definitely quite much, much more modernized, you know, but it was arguably that was a bit more towards the original than what dad was doing, you know. Yeah, so, but in, in the true folk tradition, he actually adapted it and um, added his own take on it. And that's now become the tradition. Uh, which... Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's been, you know, it's been it's been fantastic. And of course, you know, dad wrote his own things as well, which we all know about, you know, so um, most notably was the Tom Jones hit, which was never fall in love again, which I mean, what it wasn't written for Tom to do. You know, my dad wanted to release it because he loved 
uh, the sounds that he was hearing coming from Ray Charles, you know, um, great gospel R&B singer, you know, and dad thought, that's brilliant. I want to do something like that. Wrote Never Fall in Love Again. And the record label, which was Pi at the time, uh, which were trying to be true to their roots and wanted to be jazz, despite the fact having Lonnie Donegan on the record label, you know, who was definitely not jazz anymore. Mm -hmm. um, despite his origins of coming through with the Ken Collier jazz men and then, you know, the Chris Barber jazz band. Um, then it was, um, you know, they, they insisted on there being a jazz version. So they recorded a jazz version and a more gospel version, which dad wanted to do and insisted on releasing the jazz version, obviously, because that was their plan all along. Uh, and nothing happened with it, you know, because it wasn't what people expected. It wasn't what, you know, it, it wasn't dad, if you know what I mean, if, you know. So Tom picked up on it. And it was uh, a few years gap, wasn't it, between your dad releasing it and Tom Jones? Yeah, it was, early, it. It was early 60s for my dad. You're looking at sort of 62, 63, yeah. or whatever it was. And I think it was 67, 68 uh, when Tom released it. You know, and dad's dad's uh was it gag on stage was always what has tom jones got that i haven't got you know <laughs> <laughs> a few things uh but you know it was it was always a good laugh and then of course elvis picked it up uh in the end uh because you know elvis was permanently what did i say on tour doing all of the casinos in in, in vegas as was tom so it argued you know they were always going to see each other set at some point in time and elvis picked it up and did it you know so and that was, I think, the last track on the last album that Elvis released. I'll have to. Yeah, I don't think I've listened to that Elvis album, actually. I'm going to have to. That's the Jungle one, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's either. There's two versions with different names. One is, yes, live in the, is it the Jungle Room? Yeah, yeah. And then the other one is from, El, uh, from Elvis Presley Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee. But they're the same album. Just I will have to. I will have to seek out that. Um, yeah. that album. It's <laughs> it's yeah. leading me so far. But um, yeah, and then obviously you had that wonderful emotional moment with um, with Tom Jones on The Voice a couple of years ago. That must I have been did. very very special. It was. Uh, it was a it was a pinch me moment, you know, because I, I you know I was scouted by the show. They'd seen me at a country festival in London, and they wanted. Because they knew that the country genre was really booming in the UK, and they they wanted me to go and you know uh, try out. So that was nice. And they said, "Don't worry." He said, "It's not like you have to wait in the queue or anything." He said, "You go straight to the producer, so there's no pressure." I was like, "Well, that, that's more pressure, I think." But okay, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, you know, um, sat there and 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 you know did some original songs. That's what they wanted. They wanted originals. Um, and you know went through about another four round of auditions and they said yeah we want you for the blinds and i just thought you know what if, if nothing else this is just a bit of pr you know get nice high quality pr footage <laughs> uh, and have some fun while you're there um you know uh, and and when it was tom that turned you know it was uh, an emotional relief as well that somebody turned you know i was very nervous i'd never done anything like that before so and it was a very nice moment. And then when obviously Tom asked to do the song and we did it, it was a shock, you know, and I, I said to the, there's a video about me because I did a video on YouTube talking about it, which is yeah, about, they, they watched that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. About 2 million views on the one. I video. still tear up every time I see the footage. Of that. It's just so <laughs> incredible. It is so incredible. It was, it was a lovely, lovely um, evening. It really was. Um, it, and I mean, it, bittersweet in some ways because obviously you realize it's a tv show first and foremost before it's a talent show as well as it's a, a very good one and i really enjoyed my experience on there um but you know it was when a friend of mine who was there he said uh he says that's gonna go viral i said you think i said shit he said why i said well i peaked too soon in that case <laughs> so that probably means i'm out next so and i was out next so <laughs> But no one can take away that moment, though. So. No, 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 no. I have no regrets. I had great fun, you know, and not many people get to do three songs in two shows. So, you know, it was, it was good. Has, um, has Tom been in touch since, Tom Jones? No. Any plans to do anything? No, no. No, 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 no. I've tried. I haven't got anything back, though. Okay, okay. Um, and then um, 
yeah, just looking back. So um, two years ago, you celebrated because it's um, it's actually the um, this week, isn't it? The 67th anniversary of Rock Island Mine being recorded. Well, so being two a, years ago, being a hit this year, because uh, two years ago was when it was recorded. Yeah. And then because it was 54, it was recorded 56. It became a hit. You know, um, it was a track on the Chris Barber album, really, the Chris Barber Jazzman album. And then for whatever reason, Decca released it two years later as a single, you know, and it was played on, I can't remember the radio show, that big DJ. Dad didn't know anything of it. Somebody said to him, he said, you know, you're, you're number, number one. He's like, what? He says, yeah, check out the paper, you know, the hit parade. That must be a misprint, <laughs> you know, but it was, it was true. And the, the rest is history, as they say. You know, um, Spanda was it a six years in the was it was yeah I, yeah he, was it over thirty top twenty hits in six years or something? Unbelievable! Um, and you did a special concert two years ago to mark the sixty fifth anniversary of it. Didn't we you? did, yeah. We we did one in two thousand eighteen just at the end because it all started off with us. Well, it was Chaz Hodges, you know, God rest his soul. It was his <clears throat> initial idea. He said to me, because we were raising funds for our son's therapy for his autism. Yeah. Um, and he said, look, if you want to do a gig, he says, me and Dave will get up and do something. And, you know, we'll do half an hour. You finish the gig off. I was like, oh, that's lovely. Mentioned it to a couple of friends as I was talking, you know, and, well, I'll do something. Well, I'll do something. And then somebody said, you know, we haven't done a night for your dad for a while. Why don't we do that? So in 2018, we had Billy Bragg, Nora Guthrie, the Jive Aces, Mike Barry, Mike Reed, Ralph McTell, Chris Stifford from The Squeeze, um, Chaz McDevitt, Vince Eager, um, you know, and we, we did that at the, um, what's it called, the Union Chapel in, in Islington. Yeah, yeah, that's a lovely venue. Yeah. And Bill Bragg said, he says, so right, so what are we doing next year? <laughs> You're kidding, right? <laughs> and I, I'd, invi I'd invited Van to do that one and he wasn't available, but then he followed up and said, are you doing another one? And I said, well, yeah, next year is the 65th anniversary of the recording at Rock Island Online. So, and then Mike, Mike Reed said, um, well, we need a blue plaque to commemorate that. So we did blue plaque on the same day on the morning. And then we went and did the, the gig and we had, you know, Billy Bragg again, and we had Van and, uh, Joe Brown, uh, Dave Peacock came with us, Chris Farlow, Jim Carter was there, you know, from Downton Abbey. It was, uh, it was a good fun night. Wonderful and, it, and the next the next day i was at fsa festival in nottingham <laughs> <laughs> so busy time um you obviously grew up with music um did you always want to be a musician yeah i did uh there was never any other option you know and i had a great coach obviously and dad and he always taught me that you know the best thing to do um, the only way to make it in this industry is to write your own songs and that's why you know i've always done that you know from uh, becoming my dad's piano player into them becoming the opening act for the set. I, you know, I, I always did original material. And then uh, from then, you know, I, I've, I've kept doing it. It was difficult because, you know, uh, every, any time a, a label said that we can do an album, they would only include a maximum of one of my songs on there, you know, because they just wanted to make, you know, easy money and just do another Lonnie Donnie Contribute out record, you know, which was getting frustrating to say the least. So decided to go independent and in 2017 released my Superman EP, you know, which um, did did quite quite well for my first independent thing, you know, and that's what got me Country to Country Festival, which got me noted by the guys at The Voice and then on with Tom Jones and and then on from there. And then the we did the live album after that, which was recorded in 2019 in the Decca recording studios in the same studio that dad, you know, recorded Rock Island Line, which now belongs to the English National Opera. But that was nice, you know, it was good fun. And since then, I've then, you know, released Thank You Texas, which was recorded in love, or sorry, written, uh, co-written with two Texans at the Buddy Holly songwriting retreat in love. And that won an award, didn't it? It did, yes, at the Texas, um, was it Texas Sounds Country Music Awards uh, last year? Got best male vocalist and uh, original song. Brilliant. And um, the Americana country direction that you've very much um, taken um, yeah. when you wanted to pursue your own 
as you say, independent career. Was that a very conscious decision or did you just sort of evolve into that um, direction musically? Well, when you consider that, you know, obviously the, the influences are surrounded by, you know, with dad's record collection at home, which, you know, had everything from Fats Waller to Jerry Lee Lewis, Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, the Highwaymen, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I grew up with that. And plus, you know, I, I grew up, uh, I was born in London, but that was only because dad was doing, you know, a, a West End thing at the time, Mr. Cinders. Uh, we were living in California, you know, so California, Florida, Spain, you know, I didn't grow up here. So I was surrounded by American music a lot of the time, you know, uh, and I was, dad was big into country. And then so was I, you know, I'm, I'm a huge, uh, like I said, Waylon fan, Willie fan. And then later on, you know, I, I, I love now Chris Stapleton and Eric Church and the High Women, if you've heard them, you know, which is Marin Morris and, and, and a whole bunch of others, you know, and it's great. Uh, so it was a natural transition for me because it's, you know, I like to write stories, you know, real life events, that kind of stuff and country music, Americana music in general, really lends itself to. Yeah, well, storytelling is at the heart of the lyrics in America. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so it's it was it was a natural transition for me. Um, and when you consider really where I came from musically, you know, with dad, skiffle is what we call Americana now. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's because yeah. Americana is country with blues, folk with, you know, and it's just it, it, it's that Americana is the umbrella term. And underneath it, you know, you've got all these different genres. Yeah, yeah. And you add in, now you mentioned that you add in that California upbringing and yeah, um, yeah and that sort of laid back vibe just then comes into the, uh, comes into the music. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so what's, um, what's next for you in terms of your, um, your solo career? Are you um, working on new music at the moment? I am, yes. Um, Again, written at the same retreat uh, with another couple of great uh, songwriters in America, um, with Sean Healan, who's from New Mexico, and uh, with Tessie Lou, there's It's My Dreams, which is a, a song. I mean, we did a lockdown sessions version of it, which you can find on YouTube, but there will be a single version of it come out, and it will be included on the new album, which is currently being made. There'll be a couple more singles to come off that album as well, before the, the full album is released. And... Um, you know it's i i think there's some some really cool tunes on there you know it's um especially with the new collaborations because i do like to co-write because it's nice when you've got you know the the, 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 the old dodge two heads are better than one it's true you know because there's there's ideas that you come up with that you wouldn't come up with unless you were sitting with somebody else you know because not not saying that maybe their idea was the the one that is in the song but they say something which sparks an idea in your head again you know and 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 the other way around too that approach to collaboration is very much part of the americana scene isn't it i think um, it is and there's a feel there's a feel good sense within it as well you know it's a case of not quite as much as competition as we're in it together you know so it's it's more fun to drag these other people that you respect if you're not already friends with them along with you and have have that shared experience you know rather than try and keep it for yourself you know yeah, so, yeah. and i i like that feel you know it's much more relaxed it's much more it's it's a better experience you know it's less uptight and um, when is the when is the album due out then I don't have a release date on it yet because trying to get things done during a pandemic was difficult. Yeah, yeah. We've got Thank You Texas, which is going to be on the album as well. Um, and we, we were able to record that before lockdown happened, you know, in 2020. And then, you know, we're finding, okay, how many people can we have in a studio at one time? <laughs> Try and get a few tracks done. And then you've got to bear in mind, some of us haven't played in anger really for 15 16 months you know so yeah, yeah 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 you get to a studio it's a case of oh that hurts right i've got to try that again you know and you go for it i mean talk about rusty we have we had sand coming out of crevices we didn't know we had you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think that's that that's that's sort of talked about as much is it that that lack of live experience and, and no i mean studio is, experience no i mean whereas myself you know i was doing live shows on 
Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and then guesting on different things, you know, just be trying to be active, you know, uh, and I had to stop it after Christmas as well, because I felt that people had heard my stuff enough, you know, and I needed to take some time for me too. Um, and it was, you know, it's not the same performing in here with a microphone at a screen. Yeah. As it is, you know, in a, in an actual performance venue, because I did last September, I did two solo gigs, um, just to, to do them, you know, to, to keep those independent venues going as well. And man, it was like going to the gym after not being for a year, you know, it's that kind of a feeling like, man, you know, cause there's so much more energy involved in a live gig than there is sitting at home doing a, a, a live online gig. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And the interaction with the audience is, is different than. So well, the, yeah, yeah, because there, there is an interaction. Yeah, with, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously. You know, because it's it's very funny when you see because you notice the difference in lag sometimes because you sing a song, you finish it, and there's nothing, and then you start talking, you start the next song, and then you then the comments come up. Wow, that was wonderful. That was great. You know, and it's like, but that was two minutes later. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I um I um work for a um learning disability and autism charity and um, we were putting on um we're called stay up later we run a project called gig buddies but um we were doing a lot of um online uh online events last uh last summer so yeah <laughs> exactly what you're talking about is it's nice to get back to uh some real live stuff and you, you have got some live gigs lined up now i believe i, I do one what one, one was moved <coughs> sorry one was moved because it was um it was supposed to have been on uh, cup final day, but England did the unthinkable and got through to the final. <clears throat> so it was bittersweet. It's like, okay, England got to a final, but I have to move my gig to the 1st of September. So I did that, um, you know, but I've got coming up next. I have uh, the Eel Pie Club. It was uh, a nice venue. Yeah. Yes. Great. Love going there. Great, uh, great atmosphere in there. So that's on the 29th. Uh, I'm doing a guest appearance on the 3rd. 31st i believe it is um it's all on the website on peterdonigan.com you can find it there then i'm off to baltimore and i've got some gigs in in baltimore in maryland and that'll be fun and i come straight back and then we've got some gigs uh at the end of august as well and then into october when we're doing the cavern club you know oh, um, wonderful. yeah i'm looking forward to going back to the yeah. cavern no, that 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 would be exciting, exciting moment. Well, thanks so much for uh, for talking today. Oh, <laughs> really, yeah. really appreciate your uh, your time and um, yeah, every success with uh, with the next ventures. Thanks so much, Sam Peter. Thank you so much, Darren. You take yeah. care. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye.